Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe what's meant by systematic error. You should then be able to describe how zero error is an example of systematic error. Now this topic is part of the working scientifically aspect of the GCSE specification. Working scientifically is common to biology, chemistry and physics. Together, required practicals plus working scientifically represents at least 15% of the marks in your exams. In the last video, we saw that whenever we take a measurement in science, we want our measured value to be accurate. An accurate measurement is one that's close to the true value. We saw that any measurement can be affected by random errors. Random errors lead to random variations in measurements, and one cause of random errors is using equipment incorrectly. A good example is not reading a thermometer accurately. We also see random errors when students use a timer. This is due to differences in reaction times between different students. Random errors can also be caused by variations in the conditions, for example changes to room temperature from one experiment to the next. Now we cannot eliminate random errors. However, we can reduce the effect of random errors by taking more measurements and recalculating a mean. Now there's another type of error that we can see in experiments. This is called systematic error. In systematic error, the results differ from the true value by a consistent amount for each reading. I'm showing you an example of systematic error here. In this experiment, students reacted different lengths of magnesium with acid and measured the highest temperature reached in the reaction. And we saw this experiment in the last video. Now we can see that repeats one and two are slightly different to each other. And this will be due to random errors. However, all the results in repeat 3 are very different to repeats 1 and 2. In all cases, the temperatures reached in repeat 3 are around 10 degrees Celsius less than in repeats 1 and 2. This means that repeat 3 is showing a systematic error. Clearly, the conditions for repeat 3 were very different to repeats 1 and 2. So what could have caused this systematic error? Well, firstly, the students may have mistakenly used a lower concentration of acid for all of the experiments in repeat 3. A lower concentration of acid would explain why the maximum temperature reached in repeat 3 was less than in repeats 1 and 2. Another possibility is that the students used a different thermometer in repeat 3, and the thermometer gave inaccurate readings. I'm showing you here two different thermometers, which have been placed in iced water. Iced water has a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Thermometer A is reading an accurate value of 0 degrees Celsius. However, thermometer B is defective and is reading minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now scientists call this a zero error. A zero error is when a piece of equipment gives a reading other than zero when it should be zero. Every temperature reading on thermometer B would be 10 degrees Celsius less than the true temperature. And this would explain the systematic error shown in repeat 3 of the students' results. All of the readings in repeat 3 are around 10 degrees Celsius less than repeats 1 and 2. So this suggests that the students could have used a thermometer with a zero error for repeat 3. Now unlike with random errors, we cannot reduce the effects of systematic errors by carrying out simple repeats. If we suspect a systematic error, then we have to do the experiment again using a different technique or equipment. We can then compare our findings with the original results to see if a systematic error had occurred. In this case, the students should reject repeat 3 and carry out the experiment again using an accurate thermometer. However, what if the students did not have another thermometer? Well, if they know that their thermometer is reading 10 degrees Celsius lower than the true value, then they simply need to add 10 degrees Celsius to each of their readings. You'll find plenty of questions on this topic in my vision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. 